This is the retail display you'll be working on today. The exact location inside your Neiman Marcus has been specified in your work order. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove the stone piece off from this cap and then take the cap off to reveal the electronics. Here at the white A9, you take the back panel off. You're going to remove the three cables. Once the ends of the cables are free, you'll pull up the grommet and slide it off the ends. Because the cable paths aren't easily accessible, for every wire that we're going to be running, it's going to be done by taping the end to your ethernet and using that to fish the cables through. You can at this point remove the cable wrap from the whole bundle and save it for later. The power cable is identical to the power cable that's in your speaker kit, so you can just work with this one. The audio cable will be completely removing the power cable in your speaker kit. Um, you can save to return with the white A9 speaker that we're removing. When you're looking at the audio mixer, there are two channels labeled A9. To figure out which one is the one we're working with, just adjust the volume knob at the channel because we have unplugged ours at this point. It shouldn't respond to the volume control. Because the cable path isn't accessible, we'll be making four passes with your ethernet cable to get all the cables situated. The first one will be using the ethernet to pull the existing power and audio through unit A leaving a tail of ethernet sticking out of unit B. Then you'll swap the audio cable with the one that is in your package and you'll install the security. You will leave the power plugged in and you'll send the C7 end of the power, the three and a half millimeter end of the audio and the free end of the security tether and send those back through to unit B with the ethernet cable that you ran from the first pass. All right, so we taped our ethernet cable to the power cable and pulled it from this side so that it would pull through this hole and we have the fishing line to pull it back because otherwise you would have to climb down in here to fish it through. So this is what we did to do that. To install the security, you'll loosen the tightener uh, with the Allen key and then you'll slide it all the way down so that the security tether is fully extended and then relock it so that that stays as far unraveled as it can be. Use the drill that you brought to secure the tether onto the belt and location as shown. Next, you'll pull the power, the new audio cable, and the security back through from unit A to unit B. In order to pull it through as smoothly as possible, you'll want to tape it this way. Next, we need to get the ethernet plugged into the router. So tape the security tether end that's sticking out of unit B Tape it to the end of the ethernet cable and pull one end of the ethernet cable all the way through to plug into the router, leaving a tail end so that we can pull it back. Then tape the security tether as far down the slack of the ethernet cable as you can once that is plugged in so that you can pull it through to unit B with the tail without obviously yanking it out of the router. The next step is to get the cable wrap back on. You'll want to stagger the ends of the cables and then tape them together at the neck. Then start to feed it through the cable wrap until the ends are out on the other side. It's very important that at this time you put the grommet back on. You'll have to feed through each cable one at a time and then slide it down 
the cable wrap and plug that back in. You should have a box that just has this bracket in it. Uh, you'll line up these matching arrows and then it attaches just with an Allen key. This is how you access the inputs and outputs. Uh, you'll stick your finger in to pop out this cable pass through to make it larger. Then you'll feed each cable through one by one until the cable wrap is in. At that point, you'll zip tie so that they don't uh, pull out easily. Um, here's a diagram of each input and where each cable goes specifically, including the security tether. Once your power is plugged in, you should start to hear music. If you're not, make sure that your audio is plugged into the mixer at the unit A end. And the way that it works is when the speaker rocks to the right, the volume goes down. When it rocks to the left, the volume goes up. You should be able to test it at this point. For a final setup, you can place the socks on the front and back. They just pop into place. You press it in all around the perimeter to pop them off. You use this little tool that'll be kept with the unit. Uh, the last thing you need to do is change out the name plate. So you'll be removing the A9 plate from this spot and replacing it with the Bayo Sound Edge. You've been sent two, one is a backup. For cleanup, you'll be gathering these items that will be stored inside the unit. It's the audio cable you removed, the various tools that you used, and spare items that were in your kit. And you'll just collect all those into a bag and keep it inside the cap of unit A on top of the electronics. The last thing that you'll need to do is take finished photos that we will be sending back to our client. So they need to be very clean, very nice, good quality, good angles of each angle of the Bay of Sound edge, as well as full shots of the whole unit. We wanna make sure that all cable wraps look really nice. The headphone cable wraps should be fed into the unit so that there's as little slack as possible. We want detail shots of the cable wrap on our edge to make sure that it looks even and nice and taut. Um, those, if you can take many, as well as upload a few to Slack just so that we can see them before you leave site, then that is the last step.